Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be backing up this um, laptop here that has become um, unbootable. So uh, I'm here at the startup repair screen that's built into the laptop, and um, it uh, is not able to repair. Uh, I did do a startup repair with a Windows um, 7 installation disk, and I do recommend that method. Um, as it's a lot better to use, but um, after I was able to log into it, um, I started doing some of the updates, and then it became unresponsive, and it didn't want to uh, do anything, so I had no choice but to uh, force shut it down, and by doing so, it is not able to boot. It keeps going into a boot loop, sort of, um, and when I start up the startup repair, process again whether it be the built-in one or the disk um, method it uh, is not able to repair it says it cannot repair the computer automatically and this particular method does work uh, for the most part most of the time but I think uh, the update to service pack one kinda mix things up and uh, it's not able to work so this video is going to be about um, editing or uh, backing up uh, the data that's on the laptop so a lot of the files important files um, I'm going to be backing that up and uh, reinstalling Windows 7 then um, restoring the files and there's a couple of methods on uh, backing up the data and I'm going to show you the first method is um, continuing with the uh, continue to use the laptop itself um, or the desktop if you're on a desktop um, continuing to use that uh, to extract the data and saving it onto a portable external that I have here and it requires you to actually boot a, a temporary operating system or a mini operating system uh, and I'll show you the, that particular process and what I mean by all that but I'm um, using this uh, Hiren's boot CD version 10.1 first um, there are newer versions much newer versions like version 15 and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll use that um, but uh, for the most part, 10.1 is a pretty good um, uh, version, and there's a particular password protection uh, changer uh, that's built into this that I really like using. It's called Active Password Changer, and the reason why I need to use an Active Password Changer is because the file system, the user account that's on the laptop, is password protected. So uh, I need to erase that password because when you copy uh, the data off of there and onto a portable drive you won't be able to access the data because the files themselves are password protected so even though it might let you copy the stuff it might actually not even let you copy the stuff um, it's always good to first erase any password that's uh, tied to the account right and um, so this also works if you forgot the password and you want to erase it but um, before we start copying over, we just want to make sure that all the files are, you know, uh, going to be able to open. Because once you copy everything over, you copy everything over. You're gonna, we're gonna be wiping out that hard drive and reinstalling Windows, and we got to make sure that we um, copy everything. So uh, this particular method is just a method that I've come across as my my own experiences. Uh, there are many other different methods in doing this and this doesn't cover everyone it doesn't cover every situation but I'm just gonna try to share with you as much as I know about backing up data and where to look for the data and then restoring it um, so your situation might be a little different it might call for a different method so hopefully you know this particular method I'm doing here today can help you out so um, let's just get started by uh, changing the uh, erasing the password that's uh, built into the uh, laptop or to the uh, user account alright so I know I mentioned earlier that I was going to be using Hiren's boot CD 10.1 but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to download and burn to a disk Hiren's boot CD 15.1 this is the latest version that's out right now and this is going to be for both uh, erasing the password that's uh, connected to the uh, user account and also booting up with the mini XP software to uh, copy the necessary files to our external so uh, once you're on this website here and this link will be in the description uh, you're gonna click on Hiren's boot CD just click on this 
and it's going to go ahead and download and I've already downloaded it once so uh, here's the zip file here and uh, I like to use my uh, 7-zip unzipping program, it's my favorite program here to um, extract the files so you right click go to 7-zip and extract the files and then you click on OK, uh, choose a desktop just to make things easy and convenient so it's here on the desktop and this comes preloaded with a program that will automatically burn uh, this uh, ISO file here. I mean you can use it and burn it with uh, Windows 7 if you want um, the uh, Windows disk image burner or whatever other program that you might have but it does come with a uh, its own uh, burning program to uh, burn the image and uh, you can just click on burn to CD run this Windows command script here it's uh, fairly easy right and so uh, you're gonna choose your um, optical drive here and I have a disk uh, ready to be burned on the D drive and then I'm just gonna uncheck the read verify because it's just gonna take forever and I don't really care if it something happens I'll just burn it again if I have to but for the most part it shouldn't be any problems um, and then that's pretty much it you can also increase the speed of the CD burning if you'd like I'll do 48 speed uh, for a CD that I'm gonna put in there you could put a DVD if you want as well so you click on start and then uh, your um, optical drive will eject once it ejects just throw a disk in there it's gonna ask you please insert the blank disk then you click on OK and it's gonna start burning and then uh, you'll have your Hirons boot CD alright so uh, I've just uh, booted up the laptop here with the Hirons boot CD uh, installed uh, in the drive and it's gonna go ahead and boot the Hirons boot CD now so uh, the first thing we're presented with is uh, a menu of just a plethora of programs for you to try out and use um, but I'm actually going to go down to where it says DOS programs and I'm going to start this up and the first thing we're going to do is the uh, password change so I'll just go up to option 3 here for password change and then uh, right here where it says uh, uh, offline um, NT 2000 XP Vista 7 password changer just go up to that right so it's going to load up scan what it needs to scan and the first thing we are presented here was the menu and so basically it found um, a candidate for Windows uh, part boot partition that's located here on uh, the hard drive and so it found one and that's the only option that we have there so uh, the default option here is select uh, number one we could press enter or we could just manually press in enter one right and so it's gonna go ahead and scan that and then uh, it's gonna ask alright so what's the path of the registry directory and the default there is selected uh, Windows uh, system 32 config and uh, you can just press enter and then it gives you all this gibberish and you just press spacebar um, to clear through it and then uh, you're, you have options here and uh, choose the uh, number one which is password reset SAM system uh, security so just choose number one press enter alright so now uh, what we want to do is edit user data and password so that's an option number one Press one, enter. Now it's ch asking you to choose a, an account. There's these are the list of the accounts that's uh, on the computer itself: administrator, angel, guest, home group, users. And we're going to change the uh, account. It's marked uh, the uh, second option here. So we'll just go ahead and type that in. What you see there is a username, and then press enter. Now it's going to ask you, you have options here, what you want to do. We're going to uh, clear and blank the user password, which is option number one. You can also edit set new user password, but uh, you got to be careful with it on XP or Vista. It may not work too well, but I'm just going to go ahead and clear out this password. So I'll press option one. 
right? And then um, it says password clear, and that's a success. So we just uh, cleared the password on here. Now we can reboot this. So I'll do a control alt delete, and we're going to boot into the uh, Windows Mini Windows XP. Oh, by the way, your uh, optical drive here, or your portable drive here. I forgot, you gotta actually plug this in. Um, have it plugged in before in the USB. Hopefully, it uh, recognized it. If not, you can just go ahead and hit reboot again if you want. Just to um, recognize the optical drive or the uh, portable drive. All right, now we're going to boot Windows XP, Mini Windows XP. All right, so we are booted up here into the uh, Mini XP program, and uh, so this environment is running entirely off of the uh, optical drive loaded into the RAM, so it's not loaded into any of the hard drives or the portable drives or anything like that. And so we are able to actually see uh, the drives that are plugged in, so right now, um, the two drives that we're mainly concerned about is the external, which is my portable hard drive here, which doesn't have any files in it, and then the local disk, which has all the files that we want to back up. All right, so uh, what I'll typically do is just open up two windows here, uh, just so I can see my external drive here. All right, so this is my external drive put that off to the side. Now I'm going to go through and look at um, the main hard drive as to what I want to save and first thing I'll go to is the uh, users uh, folder here and in this folder that uh, user account that I wanted to uh, save or uh, download and copy is the uh, angel folder here. So this is under users and um, under default even though it uh, has a lot of folders that looks very much like the angels account the users account um, it actually doesn't have any files in it so for example in downloads if you notice here there's nothing here and then also in the favorites there's nothing here so this is empty but over here in the user account there is files here right uh, that I do want to save so um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this folder here as well as a public folder I mean even though there's more like most likely nothing in it doesn't hurt to also back it up there might be stuff in there um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this over to my external here and now it's actually copying and it's using this really great program called TerraCopy and so while that's going I'm going to go ahead and drag over the public folder and this is not a whole lot in there All right alright so uh, while that's copying I'm actually gonna go through uh, the program files here now this is where it gets a little tricky and uh, this is where you're just gonna have to do some investigating as to uh, whether or not there might be files uh, from a program located um, uh, in the program files. So sometimes, for example, uh, Kodak, and this is my own personal experience, um, the Kodak program that the user used uh, stored all of the pictures that it downloaded from a camera into uh, program files into its own proprietary software that they had installed so all the pictures were actually in uh, the program files under a Kodak folder and uh, I didn't back it up so I backed up everything that was in the documents and settings or the user account uh, but uh, it didn't contain the pictures that uh, the Kodak program uploaded into the program files and I ended up deleting um, a bunch of pictures that they had so don't make the same mistake I did go through these programs here to make sure um, that uh, you have all the programs so let's say for example this program TweetDeck which contains a lot of uh, information um, you can back that up if you want uh, in case they have uh, any um, important information there that they need 
but uh, for the most part I've already gone through this and I've looked and I don't really see any uh, programs that might um, contain any uh, data files like pictures or documents or mp3s or anything like that um, so yeah you can pretty much leave that and um, one thing that you might end up losing is uh, links um, if the person used let's say for example uh, Mozilla Firefox uh, we'll try to see here if um, you can actually copy the uh, entire folder here so that uh, maybe the um, preferences and uh, uh, favorites and um, passwords, uh, automatic passwords uh, is all stored into here. Maybe they can uh, retrieve it. Also do a Google search as to where uh, the program uh, stores all of that stuff on the hard drive uh, so that you can back that up. That's another um, something that a lot of people want to uh, keep and maintain. And um, Let's see, another thing would be uh, music within the user account, which is uh, here. There's an iTunes folder, and uh, you're going to want to copy this entire folder, and we'll see that when I restore it, um, everything that was in this uh, uh, iTunes folder and all the account and all the information should also carry over makes it really easy all right so uh, we're gonna wait until this finishes just gonna be a pretty good long time looks like about three and a half hours it's gonna take so uh, once that's finished we'll get through it and uh, we'll see what happens all right so I'm on the uh, newly installed Windows 7 machine here and so I'm um, just gonna go ahead and uh, I've already plugged in the hard drive uh, that I backed up all the files on and there really wasn't that much so um, usually I would just copy the backup folder onto the desktop here and let the user sort it all out sort out all of their stuff um, but essentially uh, as you can see here uh, for desktop um, you can just open that and copy everything onto the desktop if you wanted to uh, the downloads you can go into the downloads folder um, here and copy everything there if you wanted to and then same thing for all of the other files uh, but I usually just let them sort it out but the one thing that you might do for them that they don't really understand is that in the my music folder the default uh, path for iTunes let's see iTunes here um, is going to be this folder here so every time you start up iTunes it looks for that folder there um, even if you were to erase this folder every time you start up iTunes you'll see that it will create the uh, iTunes folder in here see it just it creates that right there and uh, it's a blank kinda um, setting but uh, if you actually delete this and go to your backup file here. I don't know why it named my music folder in Skype, but I shouldn't have done that. Um, you can just copy that whole entire folder right into my music, and it should work. Hopefully, they haven't changed up the formula as to how this works. But if you start up iTunes now, it should read everything that's in this folder. and see there you go so it put the songs and if it had a list of things it would but uh, this is basically all that they had on there on iTunes they didn't have anything at all important so uh, hopefully uh, that worked out okay and uh, hopefully for you it works out okay too uh, so yeah that's pretty much it that's the whole shebang um, there's a few more um, extra stuff that I'll uh, make another video on and that is to actually pull the hard drive out and plug it into a machine that's going to be my next video is um, swapping out uh, new hard drives All right thanks for watching I'll catch you later